Thank you very much. He was the Prime Minister who warned that lobbying would be the next big scandal. And now, David Cameron at the centre of a lobbying storm, facing big questions over the access he gave and the favours he asked for. For months, he's avoided scrutiny. Today, finally, some answers and an admission. This is a painful day, coming back to a place that I love and respect so much, albeit virtually, um, but in these circumstances. But I accept there's a strong argument that having a former prime minister engage on behalf of any commercial interest, no matter how laudable the motives and cause, can be open to misinterpretation. David Cameron started working for Greensill Capital in 2018, lobbying governments and officials around the world, a profitable enterprise. I was paid an annual amount, a generous annual amount, far more than what I earned as prime minister, and I had uh, shares. I, you know, was absolutely had a big economic investment in the future of Greensill. Mr Cameron insists the prospects of a big payday did not motivate his frenzied lobbying of government. 56 WhatsApp messages, texts and emails plead him for access to government loan schemes early in the pandemic. Among them, this on April 3rd to top Treasury official Tom Scholar. Again, Greensill have got a no and genuinely baffled. This seems bonkers and now calling Chancellor Gove everyone. Then this to Mr Gove. I know you're manically busy, but do you have a moment for a word? I'm on this number and very free. And the next day to Rishi Sunak. Really grateful for your engagement on this. As agreed, I think one more conversation's what's required. Let's try and do it today or tomorrow. Do you not feel that you have demeaned yourself and your position by WhatsApping your way around Whitehall on the back of a fraudulent enterprise? I genuinely believed these were good ideas to help small businesses. I did not believe in March or April uh, when I was doing this contact that there was a risk of Greensill falling over. Mr Cameron said it would be a painful day. In the end, it was absolutely excruciating. A former Prime Minister told by MPs that his reputation was in tatters, that he had brought the office of Prime Minister into disrepute, that his lobbying style was more like stalking and that he was motivated by personal greed. Accusations that were all rebuffed by Mr Cameron, who acknowledged that there were lessons to be learnt, but insisted that he had acted in good faith. Four hours of interrogation, but the questions still come in, with Greensill and Mr Cameron under investigation from Parliament, Whitehall, the financial regulator. A day Mr Cameron will want to forget, but this story far from over. Beth Rigby, Sky News, Westminster.